deal with a little bit of bounciness here. I left all of my uh, tripods in my wife's mom van. And uh, I'm having to use like this weird uh, bouncy thing. One sec, I got to take my meds. Otherwise, I'll forget. Get yeah. out of there. Oh, and I got to get me a sneak vape. Sneak vape. Actually, this is YouTube. I can just regular vape. We got all kinds of stuff to talk about. Um, so much stuff, I don't even know where to begin. Man. Okay, so let me start from the most important thing we have um ari katarina has a, a company who runs her facebook social media stuff um they they're uh, like a hands-off company to where i can make my stuff here on youtube and then they can take those videos and condense them down into facebook size videos but more importantly they can monetize it which is something I don't have time for. I'm doing 16 hour days, seven days a week right now. I have no time to add anything else, uh, which is why this is going to be the last Monday live members will get lives. Um, but as far as like the regular channel, I think the lives are actually interfering with, um, the growth of the channel. Thank you, Jen. Um, and they're mainly because it's taken up too much time. The time that I spend doing this can be used to, to be cleaning and actually creating more videos. Anyway, uh, they, that company came to me and asked to take me on as a client. We have been talking for about a week. And then um, I finally decided to sign the contract. It's fairly straightforward. In fact, we're setting it all up right now. Um, I had to pause the paperwork on my end in order to do this live. So anyway, um, we will have a Facebook page and more or not more importantly, but as important, they're going to be taking legal action on all the pages that have stolen my content. There's one guy who's got a hundred thousand followers, another one who's got 243,000 followers. If you're following a Facebook page with that many people, it is not mine. Um, I would implore you to not find and follow my regular Facebook page because that's my business page and I'm going to keep it that way. Uh, so we'll have my business page for my actual housekeeping. Then we'll have the page for me, which will be how you can contact me via Facebook and um, and see the videos there and, and stuff like that. But when people message me on my Facebook page now, it dings me and all of my employees across the board. So I prefer to not get messages through there. So anyway, um, that's the first thing on the plate. That's what we're working out today. Second thing to work out is we do have, I know I've mentioned this several times, but for anybody who doesn't know it, um, I have bought all of the supplies to start my retail operation so I can start selling things the way that Detail Geek does. And all of that is in my house right now. If Facebook ends up giving us um, a monetary injection, then I'll be using that money to buy a building so that we can have a feet on the floor type of um, like an actual store. That will also be where I build my YouTube studio so that people traveling through my area uh, could stop in and meet us and see the shop and see the uh, YouTube studio and how we make stuff and, and spin kick each other in the face. And, you know, um, so all that is on the plate. I am going to build or Emily is going to build a website hopefully this week. Um, and then we are also going to be working on some more shirts. That's one thing we had a conversation about a couple days ago is we've slacked off on shirts and I want to get some more out there shirts, mugs, and all that stuff on the merch site. So that stuff should be happening pretty soon. I have 
one shirt idea that I think is hilarious and I'm going to make it this week. It is uh, a live, laugh, spin kick shirt written in the live, laugh, love font. So that will be up. Um, we're going to make the APC stickers and shirts and all that. Um, that, that will be hopefully this week or next week. Um, so all that's on the table right now. Um, Adrian is leaving the company to go to college. So I have been, if you've wondered where I've been online, why I've done like lives, but not a bunch of videos is there was a two week spread where one, I was sick and couldn't do any houses. I was too sick to even move Two, the business has gone insane. Um, in that I've needed to put in so much effort that I've had to re point myself in other directions. And three, I didn't have hoarder houses to clean for just one week. So people have been asking me where I've been, like, why have you been gone so long? It's like, I skipped like one week. That's all I did one week. I didn't put up my, my regular video, you know, people, uh, um, I did, I didn't have that live that one Monday and stuff, but um, so that's another reason that I implore people to subscribe because I do give heads up on any time I'm going to miss a video, which is extremely rare, but I always give a heads up in the community section. I'll put a post about it. So um, what are some of the other things that's happening? We've got all kinds of stuff that's happening. I'm trying to figure out a way to do a house this week because, of course, this week's Thanksgiving in the U.S., and nobody's going to let me clean a hoarder house on Thanksgiving. And usually I need at least two days to clean a hoarder house, if not more than that. So I'm trying to do a cleaning video um, for this week because I don't want to skip yet another week. And I'm not sure exactly what it's going to be. I'm still hunting in that area. Um, Emily is doing fine. For those who don't know, she, when we first met back in 2009, she had to have a tumor removed from the front of her brain. Um, it was non-cancerous. It was just a, a tumor that had to be removed. They had to go up like through her nose and do it that way. Um, that came back and she is currently, um, working out how to get surgery on that and the what, when, and where. When that happens, she'll be in the hospital for at least 10 days. And so that means that you're probably going to get some content that's very hospital related. <laughs> Maybe I'll go down and clean a hospital room or something. I don't know. Um, I likely, I, I don't know, if I can't find anything else to do, I will just straight up film myself making Thanksgiving dinner. And, and post that. It, it would not be live until after Thanksgiving, obviously, uh, because I think our Thanksgiving dinner for our family is going to be on Saturday rather than Thursday. So I don't know. I'll figure something out, man. It's I always find something to do. Um, but yes, to, after today, there's not going to be any more Monday lives. There will be lives in the member section, but there won't be on Monday for the general public. And that's because if I get up at, say, 9 a.m. and I schedule this for 1, I try to work between here and there until it goes live. But basically, all I do is I work and then I worry about this video and I can't do any anything else. It's a matter of time. Um, I'm, I'm Like I said, I'm going literally 16 hours a day, 7 days a week. All, all 7 days. All, every one of them, 16 hours. And I have to have some time to pull back and focus that um, in other areas. And so I'm trying to um, to free up some time and free up my sanity. And then it, there, it has a, a tertiary effect on the channel that a lot of people don't realize. So I put out my cleaning video on, um, let's say, a Friday or a Saturday. Let's call it Saturday at the latest. What I do is I put out that video and the thumbnails up and here's the video, here's the cleaning, blah, blah, blah. On Saturday night, I have to put up the thumbnail for the Monday live, or I'm sorry, it's Sunday. I have to put up the thumbnail for the Monday live and it pushes the new video back to replace it with the new thumbnail. So people think this is the new video instead of this one. And so it actually drops off um, the, the viewership you can actually see it happen in the, in the stats. 
It'll be going great, great, great. And the second I post that new thumbnail for the live, bam, it just drops off. So I need to open that up and let this my new videos breathe for a little bit. Um, no, for anybody who thinks that the videos are coming through Facebook, that's not correct. I'm adding Facebook to what we do. I, YouTube is my home. That's where every, nothing changes anywhere on the, the whole internet with what I do. Nothing changes. This is, uh, all the YouTube videos will be there exactly like normal. Uh, all of my attention will be on YouTube. I have a company who's coming in to then re-edit those videos into smaller Facebook size videos. And then they're going to post those videos on Facebook so that I have a different audience and another line of income. Yeah, so it's um, that's just a way for us to make money. That's why it's a good news thing, because I've never monetized um, anything before on Facebook. So um, what, what we'll do is if we end up getting a decent amount of money for um, through Facebook, then that money will be relocated into building the building and all that stuff. So, yeah, the Facebook thing is just a another outlet like I don't use Snapchat I don't use Facebook I barely use uh, Instagram so I need somewhere I need somebody else to do those things for me where in the Midwest I'm in South Central Illinois Mia hello sneak babe Hey, Lena, is somebody actually doing the dumb, autistic, judgmental thing in here? I, I can't see um, the, the chat because whenever I'm talking, I can't focus on both things in the same time. Because if they are, they need to be booted. I don't have time for like childlike thinking. That's somebody who's very look at me energy. I, I don't. Uh, do I cook? I do. Uh, so what's my plan for travel cleaning? Um, sorry, I'm still kind of looking at chat. Um, that's one of the reasons I need to free up time. Uh, is because I don't have time to do it right now. So I'm, um, want, if, if I can get rid of the Monday lives and I can get, um, yeah, just tell me who, uh, let me go back up here. God, I hate whenever these things interrupt. I don't like childlike thinking. It's so, please look at me. Please, um, dear God, notice that I exist. Oh, I found it. There we go. Is it the DLT, BGY, blah, blah, blah? Even if it's not, I'm getting rid of them. There we go. If I accidentally... If I accidentally got somebody who was innocent, I, I apologize. I'll make it up to you by refunding the zero dollars and zero cents you paid to watch the channel. Okay, so the, the travel thing, back to the travel thing. Um, I will be traveling for these, but things like this with the Monday Live and all that, it's just, it, it's, it takes up too much time. So I'm trying to free up, even if um, I free up two days a week, then I, um, I can be able to travel close. And then once I fi figure out a way to three, fi ugh, I can't talk today. Once I figure out a way to free up, say, three days a week, which is almost impossible, then I'll be able to travel out further. Um, yeah, so I, I learned how to cook because I used to be an alcoholic. And I quit drinking and then realized I was extraordinarily bored because I filled my day with booze. So I started learning how to cook. Uh, just to kill boredom because bo in the hands of an alcoholic boredom is like one of the most dangerous things that you can have 
um, boredom and money. So I learned how to cook to pass the time. And then I just got better at it and better at it. And then part of our, my autism is that I have to um, learn everything inside and out. I have to master it. Otherwise, it drives me crazy. Jason's feeling better, yes. What's up, Memos? Did I used to clean even before I started my business? I did. Um, not, I didn't clean as much as I clean now, but the business kind of makes, <laughs> makes me do that. Um, am I completely free of alcohol? Yes, I haven't touched booze in many years. And I actually... I avoid, I avoid people, places, and things that would give me the craving. So I don't go to parties. I don't hang out with people who drink. Um, I don't go to anywhere uh, that may be associated with old drinking habits. It's just, it's too risky for me. I'm not the type who can drink three or four beers and be done. I'm the type, if I drink one, I've got to have 12, 18. Yeah, so um, the video for this week, I'm going to, as soon as I get off here, basically, I'm going to be uh, talking with that new company, and then I'm going to basically try to dive into whatever cleaning I can possibly do for this weekend. The membership video is not as difficult because those are more relaxed, and if worse comes to worse, I for those who don't know, on the membership section, I actually sometimes go back to my old videos that had no narration and just music. And I re-edit those from scratch, from raw video all the way through. And then I, I narrate them for the first time and I post those on the member section. So a lot of the videos that are older that have no narration but have the annoying YouTube music, those have been re-edited and re-narrated and made like my normal videos that you see now but they're only accessible through the members section. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, quitting drinking was a life changer for me. I wasn't mean, um, but I was, I don't know, loose-lipped and um, inhibitions dropped, so I did a bunch of terrible things. And I come from a uh, drug-addicted and alcoholic family, and it's, um, I was dumping all my money into it. And I got to the point to where I was drinking like 18 a night. So, uh, once I quit and my head got clear, then I don't know, uh, things started happening. Um, good things. And so, uh, I, I just can't risk going back to that again. For those of you who are just entering, there was no subject for today. This is my last YouTube live um, for or Monday lives, not my last live. Um, but for uh, I'll repeat it one more time, but I'm freeing up some time uh, because we're getting ready to do a whole bunch of different crazy stuff. So the Monday lives are kind of getting in the way from um, they're they're placing a hurdle in front of growing. So. I will still be doing lives for members on Wednesdays um, if I don't have like a full on video to give them. But for the most part, for, but the Monday lives have been too much of a cluster for, for me to handle. Thank you, Michelle. I didn't do a 12 step or anything. I just, um, I just straight up quit, which was really dangerous because I, I had drank for so long. I actually had hallucinations when I was drying out. Sneak vape. Was I cleaning when drinking? No. Um, I did a lot of weird things when I drank. Um, I played pool a lot. I um, played guitar. I've got a thousand dollar acoustic back behind me, behind this stupid bed thing that I want out of my room. Um, but I've I've not I barely touched it. I've touched it maybe twice since I bought it. And part of that is because I used to drink while playing guitar. And so it kind of scares me to play because I'm, I'm afraid I might get the urge to, to want beer and I can't do that. 
I didn't drink hard stuff. I just drank beer, but I drank like 18 a night. And back then I, I only weighed like 150 pounds at six foot four. So that was way too much for anyone really. But I mean, way too much for a guy that, that skinny. But yeah, it changed my life. <laughs> how many people are in the members' lives? Um, do you mean how many people are members? We've, we're approaching a thousand members. Um, as far as the lives, it's mostly me, but then occasionally Jason or Adri or Daniel will jump in and do a live with me. Also, I got a new watch. Actually, I got um, four new watch or three new watches. It's fancy. We're not really sure what Adrienne's going to study, though. I, she has an interest in law enforcement and a little bit of interest in um, business. I would like her to take business myself because I would like, eventually, they're going to take over this business when I retire. And so I would like her to, to be able to take over this and know what she's doing. Hey, welcome new members, by the way. That, those are popping up, and I, I really appreciate that. Deanna, thank you. Please take care of yourself and Emily. We need you healthy for Emily's surgery, surgery, busy holidays, and your business growth. Love you guys. Well, thank you, Deanna. Uh, that watch, I never know how to pronounce it. Um, Bulova, Bulova, it's B-U-L-O-V-A. I bought three of them. In fact, I'll be right back. I want to get the other two because I want to show you. Okay, so I'll show you the one I'm wearing again. That's this one. And this one is a kinetic or what? Thank you, Susan. And that's what they call, um, a lot of people call them kinetic and they're, they also call them automatics. But I also like um, kind of a darker blue and I like red because I've got shoes that match that. And so I bought this one that's blue. And then I bought this one that's red. And this one, as you turn it, it kind of goes from black to red. So it's like a deep red that changes color as you turn it. What are those green messages? Those are people um, who get shouted out in the, the live automatically who join the member section or have gotten like an anniversary or um, have been around for a while. So you'll get some every once in a while that'll say, so-and-so has been a member for four months or whatever. Yeah, I, I am a weird one. I don't like jewelry very much, but I like watches. I've always been a fan of watches. They were a luxury when I was growing up, there was like a family watch that was passed down from my grandfather or whatever, but I never, we could never afford them. So whenever I grew up and became uh, a working citizen, uh, one of the few, very few things that I splurged on was watches and my stupid car. Um, yeah, for those who don't know, uh, he had asked about uh, what's my method for stemming and asked if it was touching my beard. Deborah, thank you. Uh, yes, that is a stemming thing for me for autism. I constantly touch my beard. I also pop my knuckles and I touch my hands and I do this with my knuckles. And then what you don't know is I'm uh, constantly rubbing my legs as well. I used to have a bad problem with leg bouncing. Um, and I, I kind of mentally train myself out of that because that got extremely annoying for everyone. But yeah, I do all kinds of stuff to that stems and I don't do it intentionally. We, uh, people who are autistic, we just do those things involuntarily. Thanks for turning you on to Octopath Traveler 2. That is a great game. I haven't played it in ages. Uh, Stacy, my merch is linked. 
um, on my actual YouTube page. If you just go straight to my page, um, you'll see right underneath that, it'll say like, it'll have one of those little arrow things to the side as in read more. And all that stuff is linked right there. I also link all of my merch in all of my videos. In fact, there should be in the description of this video itself, you should find uh, the merch page. That's where I sell all my crack, son. <laughs> oh, yeah. Flying crack airlines. What's the best way to clean greasy dust on wood surfaces? That's a good question. I would use, um, I personally like Mr. Clean. You don't have to have Clean Freak or anything like that. Just regular Mr. Clean, and I don't dilute it. Um, so just spray it on, let it set for, I don't know, 30 seconds maybe, then wipe it off. If it's not wood that's easily scratched, use a scouring pad. Otherwise, just use any sort of dish rag. And then do that in layers. You may not get it all off in one swipe. Just keep doing it and then do it again. And eventually it'll all come off. Um, for those who are asking, uh, since I don't have time to like cook a turkey right now, Dorothy, thank you. Um, the way I make my turkey is really simple. Season the living crap out of the outside. I use garlic salt, black pepper, um, uh, paprika, and then whatever I, whatever else you want. Season it all the way around. Make sure that it gets salted heavily on the outside. Um, or a lot of times I won't even use garlic salt. I'll just use regular salt, but I'll put a lot of it on it. When you're done with that, it doesn't matter whether the turkey is breast side up or breast side down, though I try to put mine breast side up. Um, or no, 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 I, I put it breast side down because it makes the cavity of the turkey point upward at a 45 degree angle. And that cavity is important. Then I take like an oil-based, um, an oil-based fake butter like country crock or can't believe it's not butter or whatever. And I stuff the entire cavity full of just straight butter. Um, you can use regular butter, but it's the oily kind is a little bit better because it evaporates less. Then I cover that whole thing with aluminum foil, um, seal it tight, and then poke four holes about knife size. Just take a steak knife and poke four holes in the corners. Throw it in the oven at 350 degrees, and then you'll have to look up cook times. But when you're halfway through with cooking or three quarters of the way through, take an, a thermometer, an electric read one that can go inside the oven and trail itself out. Um, mine is one that's magnetic. It can just stick right to the oven. And you will put that in the thickest part of the breast of the turkey. Go all the way until you hit bone and then back out one or two inches so that it's in the middle of the breast, not on the bone. As soon as that thing hits 160, not 165, as soon as it hits 160, immediately take it out of the oven, put it somewhere to cool and take the tent off of it. The skin's going to be floppy, so you'll want to discard the skin. Um, but there's a way around that. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. You let that sit for at least 20 minutes to 30 minutes, if not longer. As it's sitting there, it'll go from 160 to 165 on its own. So it will gain 5 degrees, and that's where the safe part is. Now, if you want the skin crispy, about 40 minutes before your turkey's done, Take off the aluminum foil in the oven and cook it bare with no aluminum foil on there, but follow the same steps. If you want, in that last 40 minutes of cooking, you can crank the heat from 350 to like 400 or 425. But I, I don't eat the skin on turkey, so I leave it floppy, and then I just peel it off of there. Whenever you're done, the bottom of the pan, and get one of those big, deep aluminum dish pans because the butter's going to melt and go down inside of it. Um, as you're cutting the breast meat off, dip it in that butter in the bottom and just kind of shake it off and it will soak into the turkey. And I'm telling you, there have, I've never had a better turkey than that method. So suck it. Yeah, the carryover cooking is really, really important. 
Uh, Rosalia, if it um, makes any difference, I just bore the turkey to death. I just tell it stories of my childhood so that it doesn't feel any pain. It just falls asleep and never wakes up. How do you get stained toilets cleaned? All right. Uh, there, it depends on the stain. So if it's hard water stain, which is going to be white that can turn dark, that's lime scale. You need an acid based toilet cleaner. Um, soak it down, let it set overnight. Uh, so do it before you go to bed. Um, soak it down, let it set overnight and then scrub it. If it needs repeated, repeat it. If it's just stains, that's not hard water. Use, um, I use Clorox clinging gel with bleach and let it set for a few hours and it'll come straight clean. <laughs> Y'all don't pee four times a night. I do. I, I, I don't know. They call me bladder Johnny back in Milwaukee. I've used Lime Away on toilets. It's just not as good as an acid-based cleaner. You can still do it. It's fine. It's just it takes a lot longer and it's weaker. <laughs> My husband loves your videos and laughs when you talk about devil worshipers and suck it. I have banned so many people who get genuinely offended by the devil worshiping and suck it thing. And normally, I it's going to sound like I'm a horrible person because I ban so many people for dumb things, but... If the person doesn't understand the devil worshiping thing is hilarious and it's meant in jest, and they do, and they think that the suck it thing is like a pornographic perverted thing, they do not fit with what we do. They just don't, and I, I can't have people around who are going to get offended over something so dumb. I want to like give them a list of things to actually be mad about. Maybe send them a hundred bucks and say, here, here's a hundred bucks. Spend it on something that'll make you angry and then have at it. Be offended at that all you want. <laughs> Three six mafia. <laughs> What's the best microfiber cloth to use? I want to say something kind of controversial. They're all the same. The cheap ones, the expensive ones, they're all the same. Now, there are different meshes of those. So, like, whenever I start selling those on online, I start selling them through the YouTube channel and stuff, I'll tell you which ones are fluffier. And that's the only difference. One of them has got, like, a 360 rating. One's got a 480 rating or whatever. And I'll explain what those are. And it basically just comes down to the higher the number, the fluffier the rag. I get rid of rust stains. The only thing I've found has been CLR or bleach or um, Brillo pad, depending on what you're doing. You like carpet more than laminate flooring. I love carpet in the bedroom. So I'm not a fan of carpet at all, but I'd rather have them in the bedrooms because it the insulation they provide is great. It makes it to where the floors aren't cold when you get up on a, on a winter morning. So I do like them for that. And it also kind of adds a silent um, walking. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? An added benefit. Uh, but when we redo the house, I'm looking for faux marble floors. And then um, there will be some rooms that will be hardwood. But I think hardwood is actually kind of on its way out right now. I think it's going to date a lot of houses. Um, I don't like doing a house the way you see on all the, you know, HGTV stuff. Everything is gray and white and with a tiny bit of black. And it's it's really dated. Um, it's It's gotten too popular. I don't like doing it. I like different, which is why I painted this room this way. Uh, can I do a monthly live on uh, Thursday? I can do a monthly live. In fact, I've actually talked about that a little bit on the members section. Um, I will likely do pop-up lives and I'll, I'll do occasionally ones where I just uh, schedule them and say, hey, here's like a live once a month where I just hang out and shoot the breeze and catch everybody up on, you know, Q&As and news and all that stuff. How do I get cat vomit stains out of a carpet? Hydrogen peroxide, I've heard, is really good for that, but I don't. I haven't messed with it much. The thing that I like to use on most carpets is um, 
Bissell makes a Pet Max Pro solution that's really good. And somebody asked how Dakota is. That's my dog, my Great Pyrenees. Um, the reason they're asking is because she has myelopathy in her back legs, which is going to spread to the rest of her body. And soon we will end up having to put her down. Uh, she has maybe a year, if not a couple months, but she's doing good so far. We're taking really good care of her and babying her and spoiling her in the last year of her life. So I do dry the microfibers in the dryer. Um, the way I clean those is I, I run them on two cycles of pure hot water, depending on how bad the house was. Um, never use fabric softener with those because it'll make like a film that messes it just makes glass streaky once you've used that um then i just dry them like regular i don't use dryer sheets with them either just you'll have to put up with the static that the dryer causes so sneak vape blueberry Oh, we're making a blueberry shirt, too. It's not going to say anything. It's just going to have blueberries on the front of it. Yeah, but don't use microfiber on a hot stove. They melt. Don't ask how I know. Yeah, pretty much don't use anything on a hot stove. If it's hot enough, anything will melt, including your hand. By the way, Facebook is a garbage app. I'm still trying to give them access uh, to my Facebook account so they can start their thing. Um, here's the funny thing. They accidentally sent a, a, uh, an access request to one of the fake accounts that stole my like identity and all my videos and stuff. There are several on Facebook. One of them has 100,000 followers. The one they sent the uh, request to has 243,000 followers, didn't even know it existed. So they're going to be doing lots and lots of takedown notices. They had to do the same thing whenever they partnered with Ari Katarina. Um, they, they said it took like two months to, to get those all out of the system and they still deal with them all the time. Got a hair sticking out of my nose and it's driving me crazy. I'm gonna pull it out right here on camera. Take it, hair. Ow. Ow. <laughs> Don't do that on camera. It'll make you look like I just looked. <laughs> Not sneak babe. Yeah, so I've got I got so much to do. Um I'm going to be on top of the videos and then on top of the regular housekeeping business. Um, and then on top of, you know, Facebook and TikTok and YouTube and just, uh, I don't know, I, it's 16 hours a day, seven days a week. And one of the things that I learned um, in finances is I'm going to use the word millionaire. Understand I'm not a millionaire. I'm just saying this because I learned it and I thought it was cool. They say millionaires never sell their time. They sell knowledge or they sell, um, they sell something else. They don't sell their time because millionaires don't have time, typically, unless you're just an inherited millionaire. So um, there, there gets to a point to where you have to figure out the things you do with your time and then figure out monetary income from other sources. And so that's what we're working on now is, is trying to, to maximize the time and put it in the right areas. And I, I believe that the right areas with you guys on YouTube, uh, that's what I like to do. It's fun. It's my hobby. If suddenly all of you decided I'm a scumbag and left, um, <laughs> then I would still be doing this because I like it. So that's where my time's going to go. There, there, there shouldn't be a time where I leave YouTube. So. Uh, do I prefer ham or turkey? Uh, we usually do both. I usually, if we have a large family coming in for Thanksgiving, I will make two turkey breasts and one ham. If 
we have a regular size family coming in, me, the kids, Emily, and that's about it. I'll make one turkey breast and one ham. And I make shank ham. I don't make those football looking things. I make a bone in ham shank. Uh, what is Emily having for surgery? Uh, I think they call it a pituitary adenoma. Um, it's a small, well, the first one she had removed was small. This one's three to five times the original size of the original one, but it's basically a tumor that's up here or all on the bottom. I can't remember, but they have to go through the nose, make an incision, go up into the brain and remove it. I've never made turducken, though I know what it is. It's hilarious is what it is. Have I ever had to call for extra helpers when dealing with a hoarder house? That's a great question. Um, I have. Uh, there's been a couple times where I've called people and said, um, I called some of my helpers or my employees and said, cancel today, meet me at this house. I need the help more than we need that money. But I only do that on houses where I know that they're cool with cancellations. If I do a monthly live, do you need to be a member? No, when I talk about monthly lives, I'm talking about main channel. So that I won't completely abandon lives. This will be my last Monday live, but maybe every once, once every few weeks or every couple months, then I'll um, jump on here and do a live just to hang out with everybody. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> Later, Melanie. <laughs> Do I have advice for insect phobias? I don't have any advice for any phobias because I've that typically takes some uh, psychology to do. It's like a professional psychology to do. How do I remove rotten milk smell from plastic? Um, uh, if it's throw awayable, throw it away. If it's replaceable, replace it. That's a hard smell to get rid of. Do I ever sing? I used to. Do I ever watch ASMR videos? No, I hate ASMR videos. I actually have a sadistic hobby on TikTok. If I find ASMR videos, except for one, there's one person who's a friend of mine who I'll, I'll never block her, but I go out of my way to block ASMR channels on TikTok. It is like, it's fingernails on a chalkboard to me. Especially if they're talking like really close to the mic and I can hear their tongue popping. One thing you guys don't know. Um, so this is the mic I use. It's a Sure mic. It's one that's professional for um, podcast recording and for musicians. This picks up everything. So I have recently figured out I have to chew gum whenever I talk into this because it will pick up my tongue popping if my mouth is dry or too wet or whatever. My teas pop. If your tongue pulls from the top of your mouth, it'll make a, a sickening macaroni type sound and it drives me nuts. So I have to chew gum and whenever I'm editing audio, I have to zoom in on a microscopic level and clip out those pops. If you heard the video, the video with unedited audio, it's basically me saying a sentence, then sitting in silence for half a minute. Then it, my tongue will pop and then I'll have to go through and edit each one of those little pops out of there, it drives me nuts. I can't take it. So one of the things I'll be doing at some point, if I ever start making um, like big money, is I'm going to hire an editor specifically for sound so that they can go through and edit all the pops and clicks and ticks out of there and they can get, you know, uh, it's not a pop. It's not, it's not what you're talking about. Pop filter is for saying peas or T's and uh, it's the burst of air that comes out, the pop filter won't take care of the mid-range tongue pops. That's a different thing. But yeah, I'll end up getting um, uh, an editor to help me out with that because that's what takes the most time in editing. The edge of your fridge uh, turned yellow, how to get rid of that. Try peroxide, if not bleach. Um, otherwise, sometimes those things yellow and it's it's like in there. You can't get it out. So I'm not really sure. <laughs> uh, 
Um, have I had a person whose house I clean for YouTube get mad at me for cleaning afterwards? Not really, no. Um, I've had people who have trouble finding thing at, things afterwards, and I tried to, you know, steer them in the direction of finding stuff. Because, see, here's the way I clean. I clean, thank you, Paula. Um, uh, Paula, go ahead and buy your Clean Freak because I won't have chemicals on the store for a bit. That's a different animal all, all on its own. But So whenever I clean on a hoarder house, I organize things to where if you find one thing, you'll find the rest that are similar. So if you're looking for mail, you'll find all the mail in one spot. If you're looking for keys, all the keys will be in another spot. So I keep similar items with similar items. And that way, if they have trouble finding something, I can tell them a very generalized direction to find it in and they shouldn't have trouble. So is it toxic to inhale bleach? Yes. It's one of the reasons I don't use it. I'm allergic to bleach. Bleach reacts badly with a ton of chemicals that can create everything from chloroform to um, mustard gas. So I don't, I don't use bleach a lot. Will I have squeegee for floors? Um, I can. Uh, it's one of the things that I can buy, so I can add those to it. What kind of mop can I use? I'm old and weak. Um, I like Bona. It's easy. Uh, you don't have to worry about a mop bucket or anything. You just use it. Do I truly hate spin mops? If so, why? Yes, I hate them. They're small they drag plastic across the floor. They've got a little plastic triangle on the top and they will scrape the floor. It's almost impossible to use one for the type of work that I do. For regular home use where you're not digging up like tons of filth and grime off of a floor, I'm sure they're fine. But for the floors I do, the spin mops are terrible. Do I have a strict morning routine? I do, but it's it's totally based in my autism. I have to do things in a certain way. Um, get up, use the bathroom, pour my tea, take my meds. I do a shot of cold brew coffee. I don't make it. I just shoot it and then chase it with tea. Then I immediately come into the office and start checking um, for trolls on comment sections and banning people and getting rid of douchebags. And then I, that'll take me two hours every morning. Did I explain if it's the last live ever? It is. No, it's not the last live ever. It's the last Monday live because I'm freeing up a lot of time uh, so that I can do more video stuff for this, the channel. But occasionally I'll be in here for like, I don't know, once a month or whenever I've got time and I'll do some lives just to hang out. But uh, Thinking about getting a spin mop to clean baseboards, that's not a bad idea. They, they're pretty decent for that. Um, Sometimes I, I wouldn't use them on walls because they have a tendency to flip and then that plastic part on top drags and so it can scratch your walls. But Cleaning cigarette smoke out of a house, you basically need an ozone machine. Um, I would deep clean the entire house with Mr. Clean and then use an ozone machine, but you're going to have to like leave the house while that's happening because ozone can be fatal. And so, but it, watch a whole youtube video watch several youtube videos on how to use those machines because they can be dangerous but uh do i like wet jet they're okay they're not as good as bona uh, but they're the next best thing as far as like since they're they're a little cheaper so that helps um but bona is just a little bit better hey i'll be right back i gotta refill my tea real quick
All my cats are outside of my door. They're mad I won't let them in. Oh, man. I'd bring in Beans, but Beans likes to, he'll sit up here for a second, and then he jumps down and tries to eat all my plants. And my plants are kind of a little on the neglected side right now anyway, so I don't want him adding to that. Oh, man. If I showed up at your door and asked to help with the hoarder cleanup, would I let you? If you showed up at my door, that you'd probably be met by police. <laughs> So here's a here's a real thing that happened. I had enough genuinely like mentally disturbed people contact me that we not only had to change all the locks on our house, I had to set up a camera security system, motion detected, night vision, the whole nine. Um, if I live by myself, wouldn't care. Um, I can take care of myself. But um, with the wife here, um, my kids are occasionally over. I didn't want to take any risks and so i had to put up a full-blown security system so yeah it, it can be a little scary i mean people track down my address and stuff so like um whenever we get the building for the business that'll be nice because it's like people want to send me stuff every once in a while they say you know i'd send you christmas card or or whatever they want to send me some sort of cleaning gadget or whatever. And I don't do that because I don't want to give out my address and I don't really want to accept things from people. Um, but whenever I get the business, that's another thing. I can have, you know, things actually sent to me and I can accept them, but. Now, nah, PO box doesn't work. Uh, the things that people want to send me is, um, are bigger than a P.O. box can hold. And remember, I live in a small town. Uh, we Our P.O. box system is almost non-existent. Plus, there's a whole lot of things that I can't use a, a P.O. box for. And so a P.O. box is kind of a waste of money for us. Uh, there's no UPS sort of deal around here. Oh, geez, Heather, that sucks. Had to multiple times because some freaky guy was stalking me. I, well, then that's another thing I'm going to have to do is, uh, thank you, Peggy. Uh, I will answer that question in just a second. Um, I'm getting a business phone because some people have actually tracked down my phone number and I've had direct calls from people. So I've gotten to the point that I don't answer any phone call that I don't know where it comes from. If it's not my contact list, I don't answer it. Um, so yeah, I, it's kind of creepy. I'm always nice, but I mean, to track down somebody's personal phone number online and just call them, it's, it's a little weird. Um, Peggy, go back up here. Are you planning on filming any of, any of your rebuilding of the house after the fix? I am. Um, because we are going to do some DIY stuff to it. And we're going to be doing some major renovation where we're going to be removing several walls, including some load-bearing walls and putting in a beam so that we can open up the entire middle floor of our house. So um, we will be filming that and I will be making a big uh, video out of the renovation. Sneak vape. No, that's what I call deep cleaning is sort of a South Park thing there. So I'm not um, a big fan of luxury vinyl. I mean, I like it uh, cleaning wise. I am kind of a traditionalist if it comes to hardwood. So not only do I want hardwood in specific rooms, but I want 1920s artistic art deco um, hardwood. 
<clears throat> so instead of the hardwood being like this and then this, then this, where it's like all overlapping normal, I want an actual design in the floor to where it's got almost like a paisley sort of design boxed out and framed. Or if the room is like this, I want the hardwood to go at an angle. So I want every piece of my house to be a, um, a piece of artwork, including the way the walls are painted, the, uh, the way the floors are put together. I love different. And so even though I like a lot of the houses that are gray and white now, it's just become too mainstream. I have never been a mainstream person. I've always been like, when grunge first came out in the 90s, it changed my life because I found my people. It was not only okay, but cool to be different. So you couldn't tell it now. I mean, I'm wearing a name brand hat and an Adidas shirt. Uh, I just, that part of me uh, changed. But as far as my decorations, I like different. When I started this channel, did I envision that it would be so big? And what changes did you make when it blew up? I never thought it would be big. I, I did the channel for myself uh, because it, that was a part of my autism. So I wanted, I had watched a bunch of cleaning channels like Ari and Barbie and stuff like that. And I ran out of stuff to watch because I watched everything. Um, and then there was a very specific type of cleaning I wanted to see that wasn't being done online. Barbie did it to a certain degree, but uh, and that's hoarder houses where you have to keep the stuff. You can't just throw everything away. And so that to me is more realistic because you can't just trash everything they own. So I just decided to do it myself. And the reason I even started the channel was so that I could edit the videos into sped up uh, fast motion stuff, and then I can watch the house go from chaos to order. I'm not watching myself on those videos. I'm watching the stuff. Uh, so I did that specifically for me, which is why there's no narration in all the beginning videos. When it blew up, then I was like, okay, you're going to have to narrate to explain some of what you're doing to people because they're not going to know, like I know if I'm watching it because I did it, but they're not going to understand why I did this or why I did that. So I started narrating and then it really took off and then I got comfortable narrating. And so now the hobby isn't just cleaning. I, I took on the hobby of editing and production. So it's basically two hobbies. One of them's cleaning the hoarder house. The other one is editing, narrating and producing a video. So I got an extra hobby out of doing this. Uh, the changes that I made, obviously, were getting rid of the music. I never really much liked that anyway. And then, obviously, the narration style changed over time because I think it's funny to show an immense amount of empathy for somebody who's going through this mental illness, but then also to say these really weird, almost semi-violent things about spin kicking and punching and then calling Jason filth. And it's like there's a a foil to that humor where you're a, you're being a super nice caring person over here then you're just being a dirt bag over here with some of your like personal beliefs that obviously aren't real and so i started putting that in there and most people get it um the people who don't i just don't allow them around anymore because they if they don't get that they can't really understand the community it's not that it's it's not that i want them out of the community it's that if they get so offended that they go off in the comments, those are the people I get rid of because if they're that offended by just a simple little dumb joke, which is super common here in the Midwest, this type of humor is super common in Illinois, then no, I don't want them here. Thank you, Janelle. The under the bed voice. That's one of my favorite voices to do. The, Leave me alone. <laughs> that and I, I had to practice um, the it's been several part several times because I kept getting too shrill on the end. Um, so it was me in the room 
uh, Emily was in the other room watching football or something, and I'm in here narrating. And so it was just me for about two minutes going, it's been <laughs> over and over and over again until I got the one that I wanted. <laughs> Is there, there are some voices I can do well and some I got to practice on. So there's obviously, there's Butthead. <laughs> that's pretty cool. And then there's Beavis. <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty cool. And then, uh, hi-ho, Kermit the Frog here. And then Ernie is almost the same thing. Hi-ho, Bert. Squares are neat shapes, Bert. And then Humpty, Humpty Hump from Digital Underground is the same throat mechanism. Uh, but that's a, it's been a while. Hey, y'all, Humpty Hump in the house, y'all. Ha-ha. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of voices that I could do from, like, as party tricks when I was younger, so I try to utilize those occasionally on my introductions. God dang it, Bobby. Sneak vape. Uh, yeah, I get a lot. People say I sound like Mike Rowe. They also tell me on TikTok nonstop. Um, they tell me I sound like Mike Rowe, um, the Graham Fit Pacer guy, um, which I had to look up. Um, the narrator from The Sandlot, Ray Liotta from Goodfellas, and um, sometimes Mike Judge. Has the house I cleaned last been auctioned yet? No, they're getting ready to put it on auction. I tried to talk him out of auctioning it. I offered him money for the house um, in an as-is condition. Uh, he's probably not going to do it because I think he thinks he's going to get more on an auction than he would from just a private buyer. Uh, the reason I tried to talk him out of an auction is because the things that we saved from that house um, aren't really fit for auction. Uh, auctioning those off would be almost the same as throwing them away. And so if he went to a specialized vintage toy auction, he could make thousands. If he did this in a regular Midwest auction, he'll make hundreds. And so I'm trying to talk him out of auctioning and just selling the house separately. But I mean, the house has so much wrong with it as far as plumbing and electricity that he's not going to get more than about $10,000 out of it, 20 at the max. And then um, somebody, whoever buys it will put $50,000 into it just to get it in working condition again. But <clears throat> yeah, this is the last Monday live, but um, B, but I will be doing some on uh, the member section. And then like once a month, I'll pop up and do lives. I'm just freeing up some time so I can do more for the actual channel. I offered him $10,000 in cash for the house because that's about what it's worth in my area. Um, but if he, if he lets me, I'll write him a check tomorrow and just buy it. And then I'll put two months and $50,000 into it and turn it into an actual affordable, safe, nice looking rental. Yeah. Jody, don't worry about joining the member section. That's, it's not as like, um, I don't want to say worth it. It's it's just a place where people can, you know, support the channel monetarily a little bit more to help me pay for dumpsters and, you know, employee salaries and all that. But it's not like I don't do like life changing videos or anything in there. I just do some extras to show appreciation for uh, the people who, you know, want to show some extra. But I'll, you know, I thought about at one point doing the member section for like a year and then going back and releasing the year old members section stuff one video at a time but the only problem with that is if people pay for the membership one of the things they like doing is going back to the beginning and watching them all in a row so i think i'll keep the members stuff to the members because i don't want people paying for a membership and then just giving away the old stuff for free i think that's it feels weird on my end 
as Drew said, he'd try out working for you. He did try out and it's just not for him though. Um, he may end up doing the retail thing. So he's not into the housekeeping part, but he may be into it whenever we do, you know, the retail part and doing shipping and handling and all that stuff. But, Lifestyle Creep, that's a great name. Yeah, the, the Capital Restoration, Jaw Butt, that is a great name. Jaw Butt Jelly Man, you're now my favorite name. Uh, I bought my plot with two 100 plus year old houses for about 10,000 to need Capital Restoration, but it's worth it. Yeah, it's, it's a ton of money and it's a ton of... Uh, Sweat labor, uh, sweat income, or whatever they call it, sweat investment, sweat investment. Um, but yeah, I think it'd be worth it. I need to have that extra passive income as well so that I can um, remember I pay everybody you see on video gets paid. They get YouTube bonuses, they get paid. You sweat equity, that's what we're looking for. Thank you. Uh, but they get paid a regular salary and they get YouTube bonuses. So, like the memberships help pay for that. The YouTube channel itself helps pay for it. Uh, the store, once we get um, that up and running, you know, that extra money will be helping pay for them. Because right now, I mentioned this in, in like all my lives, but the housekeeping part of the business doesn't make me money. In fact, it loses me money. The only reason I have it is because I want to be able to provide jobs for people in my area. So I'm fine with losing money on the housekeeping end of the business in order to make sure that the people I know and love can pay their rent and their bills and all that. Um, so that's why I do it. But once I get say three or four employees and they're doing two houses per day, the business will be profitable. Emily. Yeah, I, Emily, this whole thing didn't have a subject. This is um, just me kind of hanging out with people and answering questions. Everybody was giving you well wishes, Emily, for your, you have a stupid home question. Well, I'm getting ready to get off here. I've been on here for an hour and seven minutes, so I can call you here in a minute or you can call me or whatever. Yeah. In fact, yeah, it's been an hour and seven minutes. Let's go ahead and wrap up. Um, like I said, I'll, I will do more of these, um, in the future, it's just they, they won't be like a, a regular scheduled Monday live. It'll be more like maybe once a month or once every few weeks. Um, I'll jump on and hang out just like we did here and catch everybody up on news and make uh, spin kick jokes and then actually spin kick you um, in a non-joking way. But all right, I will see everybody later. Thank you. We had a thousand people in here, by the way. That's crazy. So thank you so much for hanging out. And thank you for the uh, the gifts. I really appreciate that. Later.